A trail of destruction left by the fire that broke out on Sunday morning. The interior of the National Assembly Chamber has been reduced to ashes. This is where the joint sittings of the two Houses of Parliament take place, accommodating the 400 members of Parliament and the public. The fire has left many devastated, including the person who designed the building. I am absolutely shattered and I, mean, uh, I find it a great tragedy that a building which in my mind was uh, an anchor point in the whole sort of system or political system of South Africa where you have this building as a bastion of the democracy, a beautiful building uh, which has become part and, in, and become integrated with my, with my life. Though I, I enjoyed it so much uh, working on this project 30, 35 years ago. It is uh, part of my fabric, you know, and uh, I, I know every little detail. Van der Leck also says the building complied with safety standards as required by the law. He says the office of the then speaker had bulletproof glass which was later removed. For everything else, I mean, looking at the security of a building and such in terms of firefighting and uh, uh, detection systems, that was all put in place. And the, this building actually acted and was designed to suf provide sufficient protection on its own. It's not, not linked to any other parts of the, the structure or, or, or the precinct from that point of view. Parliament says an investigation into the cause of fire, the extent of damage, the safety of the building and the estimated cost will start in earnest once the whole building is declared safe and handed over to the investigation team. Lula Mamakia, SAPC News, Parliament. Let's stay with the story. We now speak to Ben Mwasinga, who is a manager uh, for Built Environment at the South African Heritage Resources Agency. Good evening to you, and thank you so much for your time. When you listen to the story that my colleague Lula Mamakia did, she talks about the work that is going to now go into this to determine how much money needs to be spent in order to rebuild some of the damaged parts of Parliament. But it's going to be a lot more of a cost than just the money itself to the country. Thank you and good evening. Um, yes, undoubtedly it's going to be a huge cost outside of the financial implications. Um, just based on the images which you showed before, um, looking at all the wood that has been demolished, um, if you're talking about buildings from the 1800, you'll find that a lot of the materials were not present in South Africa and might have been imported. So there's a financial cost which is going to run into the hundreds of millions, but there is the invaluable cost. This is the space that is pivotal to the story of South Africa. It tells the narrative of apartheid. It tells the narrative of where apartheid was abolished. Um, it is the same space that contemporary struggles took place in, such as the struggle for fees must fall, so it has a, a very, very invaluable link to our heritage. And for it to be damaged to this extent um, is going to be a monumental task for us in terms of restoration. Some say that uh, that very part that you've just explained now, to say that it dates back to the 1800s, it also carries with it some of the painful past of apartheid. They say that it's the very reason why it should not be used as a parliament and relocate to Pretoria, because it holds some painful memories for the country, while others were celebrating on social media, saying that let it burn, uh, because it really reminds South Africa of its painful past. I wonder what is your position then on that? No, I think South Africa has a lot of contested spaces. If you're talking about Con um, Conhill, where the Constitutional Court is located, that used to be a prison for apartheid activists. Robben Island has a very painful past, and I don't think there's any reason why it should be vandalized or burnt. Those parliaments, the union buildings, Good Hope, these are all contested spaces within South Africa. So it would be very hard for me to agree with the sentiment that these spaces must be damaged when the idea, such as with the old fort, uh, which is now the, the house of the Constitutional Court, 
these spaces can be repurposed to reflect democratic and constitutional values in a new South Africa. And that is the endeavor. And irrespective of our painful past and what we feel, ultimately this is infrastructure which belongs to all South Africans. And for a small group to say, to think that they have a say in whether or not it should be damaged or exist, I think is unfair to the majority of the population. But ultimately, um, our position as SARA is to safeguard all heritage of South Africa and to confront that painful past through other means other than destruction. How does uh, then those who are the custodians of such history begin to level the playing fields, also hearing those that are unhappy with these structures? Because it's not the first time um, we're seeing concerns, especially looking at what happened at the Constitutional Court this morning. Mm -hmm. We also saw the defacing of some statues um, during some of the protests. These contest contested spaces continue to divide some people in South Africa. How then do custodians of history like yourselves begin to suggest that South Africa becomes a place for both and government and those who are in charge of these heritage sites are then able to represent the views of both these groups? Thanks, that's a very good question. The first thing to note is that um, all of these contested spaces, people are not opposed to the space themselves. If you recall with Fees Must Fall, no one was calling for the burning of the University of Cape Town. They were calling for symbols which they feel do not represent democratic and constitutional values in a new South Africa to be removed. And that was the same at the University of Free State, where they called for the removal of the Statue of Stain. If you look at our union buildings as well, there was a statue of General Herzog, which was then removed by the, uh, which was then replaced actually with the statue of our former statesman Nelson Mandela. So there's a lot of symbology in South Africa which is contested, a lot of statues, and I think the bigger conversation is not whether or not to destroy them. They can be removed. We can have a discussion, and they might even be reinterpreted. And that's a discussion for all South Africans to participate in. And I think the challenge with taking matters into your own hands is that you silence the voice of others who also have views and who also have a stake in our national estate. I wonder what are your thoughts on this. So earlier on, we saw um, the, the, the attempted destruction um, of a property at the Constitutional Court. We saw the fire. In, uh, in, 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 in Parliament, we saw the, you know, someone being arrested with grenades. Some are saying that these um, occurrences are orchestrated and they are targeting some of these institutions. Would you agree with that? Um, I wouldn't be in a position to agree with that or disagree with it. Um, it's, a, it's a matter of investigation by the Hawks. So I cannot comment on that at all. Mm. However, it is very concerning to see two sites of great significance vandalized within days of each other. That is of great concern to the state and, of course, to SARA as the Heritage Authority in South Africa. But in terms of whether or not it is a coordinated attack or whether these, where these vandalism acts are coming from, I cannot speculate at this point. Now, Ben, one of the things that's very clear is that there's going to have to be a change in how some of this memorabilia is then stored mm. because, uh, you know, some of it being destroyed, looking at Parliament, very critical parts of the history of what made Parliament being destroyed and a concern then around other national key points. How does then custodians of such history begin to store this data so that we don't find ourselves with all of these symbolisms wiped out? Thank you. Um, the one good thing about South Africa in terms of inventory management is that we've actually got a very good team in our own organization that has a catalog that is online of all of our resources all the provincial authorities are also tasked with keeping an updated register of the resources within their provinces. And as SARA, we conducted a national survey of all memorials and statues in South Africa in order to begin to address this question of representation in public spaces. So there is a bigger conversation at play. In the background, as SARA, we are engaging local authorities and provincial authorities because at some point, we must have a discussion about all these symbols and what we want there to represent us. Mm. And if something is offensive to a great deal of the population in a democratic society, I don't think that it can stand. However, this does not mean that Louis Boerta or Furwood or Jan van Riebeck did not exist. 
the fact that we're still mentioning them many decades after they died means that they are greatly significant to our story. But how we tell that story is a conversation that all South Africans must participate in. All right. Or at least be given the opportunity to. Ben, thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, that was uh, Ben Mosinga. He's the manager for Built Environment at the South African Heritage Resources uh, Agency.